So let's take a look at the following example that basically deals with describing the different types of reagents that we have to use to produce these three products from this starting material, our benzene molecule. So we're not going to focus on the reaction mechanism. Instead, we're simply going to state the pathway that is the reagents that we have to use to get from the benzene to our product. And let's begin with product number one, this benzene mono substituted benzene that contains this five carbon group. Now, the first thing to notice about this product is that this substituent, this group, the hydrocarbon, is a straight chain hydrocarbon. That basically means whatever the pathway is to go from the benzene to this mono substituted benzene, no rearrangement on this chain has to actually take place. So that basically tells us that we cannot use the Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction because Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction always lead to rearranged products, to products in which our chain group is rearranged. And because we don't want any rearrangements, we do not want to use that type of process. So instead of using the Friedel Crafts alkylation, we can use the Friedel Crafts acylation, which basically doesn't allow for any rearrangement on this group to actually take place. So basically, we take our benzene and we react it with the following molecule, our acetyl chloride. That looks something like this. So we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. We have this and we also want to mix it with aluminum chloride. So basically this molecule interacts with this to create a good electrophile which it attaches onto this benzene. And the final product of this reaction is the following molecule. So we have the bonds here and we have our oxygen here and so one, two, three, four, five. So this is our product from this reaction, which is called our Friedel Crafts acylation. Now, this is not the product that we want to form, although it's similar, but this product has the oxygen. So one thing we can do is basically reduce this. If we reduce the oxygen, we can replace the oxygen with our hydrogen atoms. And one way that we can reduce this is by by using the Clemenson reduction pathway. So basically we take zinc and mercury in the presence of hydrochloric acid and we basically produce the following product. So basically our oxygen is reduced, this molecule is reduced and the oxygen is removed and we produce the following molecule, which is exactly what we wanted to form. So the only tricky part about number one was basically realizing that we cannot use the Friedel Crafts alkylation because that produces a rearranged a hydrocarbon substituent. Now, let's move on to product number two. So now we want to go from the benzene to this particular dye substituted benzene. So basically, we still want this group, but we also somehow want to place this nitro group NO2 on to this carbon here. So if this is carbon position number one, then this is carbon position number five, which is basically equivalent to carbon position number three. So this is the meta position. So let's begin with the same exact step as in process number one. So we want to go from the benzene to this molecule here. The reason we want to produce this molecule is because we want to make sure that we have a group that directs meta substitution and not orthopara. So we'll see what that means in just a moment. So the first step is the same as here. So we take our um, molecule, our acetyl chloride, we mix it with our Al aluminum chloride and we produce this molecule here. Okay. 
one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're at this step. So why did we want to form this? Well, the first reason is because we want this same chain here. So we have to use the Friedel Crafts oscillation. Now, before we actually transform this into this, we have to use this molecule to first create our molecule. So we, we first want to basically place our nitro group onto this meta position. So if we want to place it on the meta position, we have to make sure this is in fact a meta directing molecule. Now the question is, is it a meta directing molecule? And the answer is yes, it is. This has a partial negative. This has a partial positive. And so it will basically take the pathway in which our positive charge does not end up on this tertiary carbon. And so that basically implies that when the substitution takes place, it will take place via the meta pathway. So basically, if we go from here and we react this with our HNO3 nitric acid in the presence of H2SO4, we basically produce our NO2 group on the meta position, which is exactly this position. So we get this molecule here. So once again, we're not going to focus on the reaction mechanism because we already spoke about the reaction mechanism of these reactions. So we put our NO2 group here and now it looks almost the same as this product. So the last thing we want to do is get rid of this um, oxygen and we basically follow the Clemenson reduction pathway that we took in this step here. So if we react this with our zinc mercury and HCl, then we reduce this, remove the oxygen and we produce the final product, which is basically exactly what we wanted to form in the first place. So we have our NO2 group here and we have our, um, hydrocarbon, straight chain hydrocarbon here, which is exactly what we wanted to form in step two. So the only tricky part in this step is realizing that the group we want to form first is a meta directing group because this relative to this is in the meta position. It's the one three substitution. Now let's move on to step number three or uh, product number three. So how do we go about forming number three? So this is actually somewhat tricky. So let's begin with uh, our benzene molecule because that is of course what we begin with. That's our starting material. We cannot begin with anything else. So what exactly should we do in the first step? Well, in the first step, let's form this nitrate group by the same manner that we place the nitrate group onto this one. So we basically take our nitric acid, HNO3, mix it with our catalyst SO4, and we basically produce a benzene ring that contains our nitrate group. Now, we cannot simply place our this molecule with our H2SO4 because we're not going to form that type of molecule because this group is not orthopara directing but rather it's meta directing. So before we place our SO4 onto the molecule onto this position we have to convert this NO2 group into a group that is orthopara directing. So the first step in converting this into a group that is orthopara directing, we have to basically reduce this. We have to reduce this to get rid of our oxygen. So let's uh, basically follow the same path or a similar pathway that we took earlier, except it's slightly different. So instead of, instead of using the Clemenson, we're basically going to use our H2 in the presence of palladium on charcoal, on, um, on carbon. So PD and carbon. And so what we basically do is we produce the following molecule. So we produce our 
amine group that looks something like this. Now, this is still not orthoparadirecting. So one thing we can do in the next step is to basically take this and we can react it with our acetate chloride, which, is, which basically looks um, something like this. So this is what we're basically placing on that. This is what I mean by this here. And we also have to use pyridine. And if we do this, we basically produce the following molecule. Now, once again, we're not going to focus on the reaction mechanism because that's not what is important in this problem. At least that's not what we want to do. So, uh, and we also have the acetate group attached to this nitrogen. So basically this group here. Okay, so now we basically created our group that is orthopara directing. Now I would argue that it's a bit more para directing than ortho because this group is relatively large and so is our SO4 group. And so because of steric hindrance, our para will be favored when we basically add SO3 in the presence of H2SO4. So if we add this to this, our SO4 will basically end up on this carbon here. So basically we produce uh, doesn't matter where the pi bonds are actually. So here we have our NH acetate and on the bottom we have our SO4 which is, we, which is what we were going for anyway. So we might actually produce a bit of ortho also, but we can separate ortho from para by using a special type of technique. So let's suppose we use that, that technique, we separate and we only have our para. So what would be the next step? Well, this is identical to this. So now we must convert this somehow back into our nitrate group. So how exactly are we going to go about transforming that? Well, basically we could use two steps. First, we could use some type of base, let's suppose hydroxide, and the hydroxide has a negative charge, so we can basically use, let's say, KOH in the first step. In the second step, we use our acid hydronium, and that basically gets rid of this acetate. So we form an amine group. Uh, so we have something that looks like this. And finally, to convert the amine back into our nitrate, we have to oxidize it, right? So going this way is reducing, going this way is oxidizing. So to oxidize it, we can use the following molecule. So this plays a role to oxidize it via a mechanism that we're not going to really worry too much about. Um, and we form the final product. Okay, so we can see how a lot of steps had to be taken to actually go from the benzene starting material to this product. And that's because of the primary reason that we had to convert our uh, meta-directing NO2 group to the para-ortho-directing group. So we had to follow all these steps to create this molecule, which is orthopara directing. And then once we were able to place the SO4 onto this or uh, on, onto this para position, we then had to convert this back into our nitro, uh, nitro group, the NO2 group. So that concludes this example.